Hatch is going to get all his tight end people in there now. He's got in the backfield Dominique Ross and Reginald Walker. Beanpole goes in motion, comes back to the home side, looking to throw into the end zone. Hatch throws over the middle, got his man there. Chest of Willie Turnage into the awaiting hands of Steve Greer. Touchdown, Valdosta State University. Well, well, actually, Mike, I think it hit David Banks right in the hands, is who it hit. And it was funny, it bounced off his hands into Greer's hands. Banks was despondent over not catching it, and Greer's over there celebrating. <laughs> Here's Lori for the extra point. It's up, and it is good. 35 21, Valdosta State on a home. Coming afternoon. We'll take a 30 second global break. This is the Blazer Sports Network. Excuse me. Do you wear your safety belt? Why, no. I don't wear my safety belt. Thank you. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Blazers up 35-21. Remember, Valdosta State trailed this game 21-7, so it outscored them 21 to, uh, what, nothing, 28 to nothing at some point in the football game from the second quarter on. We're in the third quarter. Blazers come in here, the third leading scoring team in the nation. Averaging just over 40 a game. We're the lead scoring team in the nation. That ball, as John said, uh, I thought it hit one of the de defensive players, but it did look like it hit David Banks. I didn't think two offensive players could touch it on the same play without a defensive guy touching it, but that's what happened on that play. Here's Dillard with the kickoff. Low line drive bouncer. Six, seven, eight times. Going to be picked up at the 30 to the 35. Drop the ball on the ground. Blazers go for it. Who's going to come up with it? The ball is on the turf of Cleveland Field and no signal yet. Let's see as they unpile the bodies down there and pull some people out of there. And now who's going to be laying on the football? Blazers say they have it. And MC says the Choctaws have the football. And that's what it's going to be. Choctaw's going to come up with it. And the man who finally fell on it was Bobby Williams, the sophomore running, running back from St. Elmo, Alabama. Now, Blazer, Blazer kickoff squad taking a page. I remember when I was at the University of Georgia, and ironically, it was Coach Steve Greer, who's Steve Greer's father, uh, coaching the special teams. Always said on a fumble, always point that you have the ball, whether or not you have it. He says sometimes you can confuse the officials, and they'll just go ahead and give you the football. So that time, all the Blazers pointing around, but uh, the officials said no, it was Choctaw's ball. Cedric Baker is the quarterback back in there. He's going to give the black one at the 35 to the 39-yard line. John Henson is in there on the tackle for VSU, along with the Blazers' Mike Berry. And that's the first time we've called Berry's name in a while. As you remember, he missed a game or two with an injury, and we're glad to see him back out there. Yeah, it is, because uh, I think if there's any spot on our defense where we're a little a little thin, that's probably on the defensive front. We don't have a lot of big bodies there, so uh, if we can keep rotating, keep a lot of fresh guys there, it helps. So uh, it's good to have... Uh, Mike Berry back as we start these Gulf South Wars here to Blackman, wind the season up. Blackman picks up three. Second and seven. Motion man to the home side. Cedric Baker is the quarterback. High backfield. Goes first man through. He's going to take it to, across the 40 to the 42, 43, 44 yard line as he burrowed his way in there. J.D. Hampton, the sophomore fullback, the man who carried the football. Edward Mitchell in on the tackle along with the Blazers, Ryan Branch, the freshman from Chifton. Blazers play good defense, play, play well defensively there, but uh, Mississippi College still able to get four yards out of that. They come into the game 23rd nationally rushing offense and averaging over six yards per care, uh, per play, so uh, they can run the football. At 262 yards on the ground against Samford last week, Kevin Blackman had 106. Slot, a split backfield this time. Baker's going to throw it short, intended for his man Ben Sanford out on the left side but threw it in it bounced right in front of him. We have not heard a North Alabama score lately when we heard early Central Arkansas was beating the Lions. Central Arkansas 3-1 and one in the league. North Alabama 3-0 and oh in the league. Of course the Blazers 2-1 and one in the Gulf South Conference. Mississippi College 
one, one, and one, although it doesn't make any difference because they're not eligible for the conference championship on probation this year and next year. Mike Nelson on the punt it away. Lacer's going to send a flash back at the 10-yard line. He's going to come in and catch it, and we got a flag down as one of the MC players actually came over and hit him on the side. He caught the ball at the 17, but actually had to turn a bit as he was... Uh, well, I know his attention was misdirected because he got hit just a bit at the 17. Should be a flag against the Choctaws for hitting a man who signaled a fair catch, although I didn't see the fair catch until very late, to be honest, with the MC defender on that particular play. And that's what it's going to be. So the penalty will be tacked on, and the Blazers are going to get five extra yards there. Spotted at the 23-yard line, first and 10 for Chris Hatcher and company at that point. Blazer offensive line has given Hatcher plenty of time this afternoon. York Kerensky, Matt Moore, Sean Bostick, Tim Fleming, and Chuck Stamey. Yeah, I think he only got sacked uh, with either the first or second series, and that's that's been it for the day. I think you're exactly right. Here's Hatcher under the center this time. Dominic Ross is the fullback in the backfield. In the slot on the left side is Sean Pender. He's going to throw to Greer on the right side at the 25, 26, 27, 32-yard line. Seven-yard pass play went to Steve Greer, and Greer may be about to set a new individual record as he's pushed out of bounds on the far side by Steve Crawford. Well, he, come to the, he came into the game uh, 39 catches, 497 yards. Uh, he's caught 9 or 10 today, and he's over 100 yards, so uh, he's up right around that 50-catch uh, mark for the season from Clark Central High School, uh, a junior. 35-21, Blazers over Mississippi College in the third quarter. Don't know how much time's left, the clock's not working. Hatcher's gonna go to Dominic Ross on the ground to the 30, trying to turn the corner to 35. He gets there, but he's knocked down. And McBeef, the linebacker, is over there. Siron McBeef, senior, Moss Point, Mississippi. He's a good one, gonna be on that all Gulf South Conference team, you gotta believe. Yeah, as he said, 59 tackles uh, on the season, and uh, uh, second on the team behind Rich Myers, and we talked about Rich Myers had 17 tackles last week against uh, uh, against Samper. Ross picks up five on the play. It'll be a first down VSU at the 35-yard line of the Blazers. Hatch is going to motion his men around a little bit. Got three wideouts on the left side. Throws quickly to Robert Williams at the 35. Williams hits the field. 40, 45, 50, 48-yard line. And first down, Blazers again. And coming over there to make the stop is Shannon Garrett, the junior D-back from Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. But Robert Williams, the bean ball, and his eyes sit on the goal line that time. I think we're starting to see, uh, we talked about in the pregame, the fact that uh, the Mississippi College defense depth would be a problem. And as we begin to, to really keep the pressure on them in the passing game, you can see that secondary, those linebackers, uh, they're starting to bend over out there trying to catch their breath. So uh, Blazer uh, offense, uh, uh, very productive right now. Hatch is in the gun. Got Dominique Ross on his right. Got three wideouts on the left side. Going to give to Ross. Ross off the left tackle position. He's snagged as he comes out of the backfield, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Heads up defensive play that time by the visitors from Clinton, and the man who made the stop was Willie Turnage, the junior linebacker from Gulfport. And Dominic is able to get back to the line of scrimmage to the It'll be second and ten inside Choctaw territory at the 48-and-a-half yard line right directly in front of our vantage point here at historic Cleveland Field on a gray homecoming afternoon. The sun came out just very briefly right before halftime, but it's been gray and a little bit windy. There was a mist of a rain in the pregame. Now there's no rain, but it's still very gray. Looks like a late November afternoon in South Georgia. Hatches in the gun, low snap. Three-step drop over the middle, in and out of the hands of Stanley Flanders. A little too hot to handle as he threw a, a bullet right through Flanders' hands at the 45-yard line. You know, that, we didn't keep up with it, but that's probably his first incompletion in quite a while. I think he had, he had another one of those streaks going that uh, I think that one snuck up on us, but uh, he had hit, I know, at least his last six or seven straight. Hatch had 177 passes without an interception until he threw two last week against West Georgia College. It'll be third and 10. Hatch standing in his own 46-yard line. The motion man is Robert Williams to this side. Two wideouts on the left side. Calvin Walker's there. Walker cuts back across the middle. Hatch wants to go longer. Got his man being pulled at the 35 to the 30 yard line. First down, the Jew. And now he's just splitting them apart. And got one of the, the players down on the field for the visitors, Brian Richardson. Looks like he is in pain at the 30 yard line. Yeah, you hate to see that. He really does. 
And while they attend to him, he's down on the field. We'll take a 90-second network break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. They're able to help him off the field. I don't think you'll see any more action today. Brian Richardson looked like he was hurting bad on that left knee. Hatches in the gun. Balls at the 31-yard line of MC. Blazers lead 35-21 in the third quarter. Hatch looking at the left side. Got Calvin Walker at the 33, to the 30, to the 29, and dragged down from behind, but not before he picked up four yards on the play. It'll be second and six. Man who came over and made the stop was David Smith, the sophomore defensive end from Fayette, Alabama. And Calvin Walker with another catch on the afternoon at half. Walker had six grabs for 84 yards. He's got to be over 100 now. Yeah, he and Steve Greer have carried uh, the bulk of the work today. 35-21. We don't know how much time left. The clock malfunctioned. Georgia wins today. Big win for the Dogs, and they even their record at four up and four down. They're going to give it to Reginald Walker. Got a sweep on the right side. Walker looking for a hole. He does not find one at the 29-yard line, and he's pulled down right at the 29. Patrick Lloyd, the linebacker, the junior from Morton, Mississippi, made the stop. So the Blazers are going to have a third and seven situation here. John Bender's going to come on the field, and Blake Duncan's going to check out of there. Flash Flanders is in there. So here comes Steve Greer, and Reginald Walker's going to come to the sideline. Third quarter's got to be winding down. John and I have no idea how much time. This homecoming crowd has enjoyed this one this afternoon, seeing the Blazers battle back from a 21-7 deficit. Hatch is in the gun. Got Dominic Ross on his right. Three wideouts on the left. Now Bender's going to move a step closer to the line. Hatch is going to look left all the way. Got to throw it over the middle. Got his man Greer in and out of his hands at the 24-yard line. It looked like he was going to make a great basket catch right at the 24. He would have still had to run three yards to get the first down, but as it is, it's an incomplete pass, and the Blazers face a fourth down situation. I think Al Mummy might go ahead and go for this one, Jim John. Yeah, he... Uh... Looked down, I saw uh, Vernon Lurie start to ease onto the field. He shook his head, said no. So uh, sent, uh, sent his, some more receivers onto the field. And I, I think it's a good call. I mean, they're inside the 20. There's a little wind out there. I'm not sure that uh, this would be in Lurie's range. But they're uh, having a lot of success on offense. Why not give it another shot? It would have been about a 47-yard field goal. They'll go for it on fourth down and eight yards to go. Hatch is going to throw it down the field. It's going to be incomplete. Had Calvin Walker at the 14 but he might have intended it for Sean Bender down at the 10 yard line. It was hard to say because he really threw it right in between both of those receivers. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if maybe he thought Calvin Walker was, uh, Calvin lined up on the left side, ran, ended up running down and running a little curl route about 15 yards. Almost looked like uh, Chris Hatcher thought he might break it to the out route. Uh, but in any event, ends the drive and that's about the first time this offense has been slowed down uh, in quite some time. It's the start of the second quarter. Brad Strauss back in there at quarterback for MC. He and Cedric Baker have interspersed throughout the afternoon. He's going to pitch it late to Blackwood. Blackwood at the 25. Does he get to the 30? Yes, he does. To the 34-yard line. Fancy footwork by Kevin Blackman there. Marcus Johnson and Rasmus Harvey over to make the stop. And also in there is Mike Gibson, the cornerback, and a flag down right out in the middle of Cleveland Field. I think we got uh, personal foul against the Blazers. Another penalty, another thorn in the side of Hal Mummy's team, and he... That's going to put it in midfield, and uh, all of a sudden you start thinking we're up to two touchdowns, but uh, we let them get back in the ball game here, and, uh, you know, that proves to be a costly penalty. It'll be right at midfield, personal foul. I did not see who committed the atrocity, but it will be a first down, Chuck Toss, 50 yards from Gloryland. They're trailing 35-21, but 1-7 here. Puts them right back into the football game. We're in the final stages of the third quarter. Clock's not running, so we don't know how much time is left. And now they're going to say what? It might be the end of the third quarter, and I think it is. That's the end of three. The Blazers lead it 35-21. We'll take a 30-second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network.
they change sides of the field at the end of three. And, John, you seldom ever see that. The ball's sitting right on the 50 where the players just move right around a few yards. They usually have to go up and down the field. I think that may be one of the few times I've ever seen. Well, you know, that's why you want that to happen in August. You know, your first ball game when you're dragging here into the fourth quarter. But today, temperature a little cool. These guys kind of bouncing around. They wouldn't have mind running 90 yards for swap fields, I don't think. But, uh, uh, it's sitting dead on the 50 on the far side hash mark. Time. 15 minutes of football to play. Time for this Blazer defense to rise up and, and, and stop them once again. Blazers had a big fourth down. <laughs> quarterback split backfield, wide out on the left side, one on the right side. Strom's going to stay on the ground, and he's going to give it up to Glover, and Glover's going to be dragged down at the 44-yard line. Tony Hill in there to make the stop. Andre Hampton got a hand. <laughs> He's going to do seven yards on the play, second and a long three at the Blazers' 43 and a half yard line. Blazers lead 35 21. Tony Hill shaking up a bit. He's a little wobbly, a little woozy. He's coming off the field in there to replace him as Keith Braddock, the junior from Laurel, Mississippi. Hill's got his hat off, and I don't know what line to go to, but that may be the only thing, John. Blazers going to rush four black shirts, three linebackers, and they jump off sides. Strom's going to let the play run anyway. Glover's going to get out of there across the 40 to the 37-yard line. Could take the play. I think it's going to be about a seven-yard play instead of a five-yard penalty, and they get the first down either way. 35-21 Blazers go to Delta State next Saturday night. John and I will be there. we got North Alabama two weeks from tonight, the big one, here at Cleveland Field against the number one team in the nation. And we close out the season in... Arkadelphia, Arkansas, which will be my first visit ever to the friendly confines of Arkadelphia. They do decline the penalty. I'll say a ditto for me, too, on <laughs> Arkadelphia. <laughs> Looking forward to it, though. I oh, understand yeah. it's, a, it's a great little campus with a beautiful stadium, so uh, it's the most important thing that uh, let's hope we win that we can win every game up until we win only need to win it to get to the playoff. I like the sound of that. Going to stay on the ground again right up the middle. Here's Glover. Glover's going to jitterbug his way to the 32-yard line. The Blazers knock him down. Two in there to make the stop. Florida. Tony Hill's going to come back in there, and that's good news for Blazer football fans. Been a lot of good news since the second quarter. Blazers were behind 21. 21. 28 consecutive points for the guys in black. Back in black in 93. And this ombre defense here of Mike Majors feels like it has something to prove this week. And so far, they're really proving it since the second quarter. Brad Strom under the center. Two men in the backfield behind him. Going to go first man through. He's going to get hit hard. And then get pushed forward to the 28-yard line. Had to get to the 27 to get a first down. It's going to be very close. The man who carried the football was J.D. Hampton, the sophomore fullback from Meridian, Mississippi. Ryan Branch had a hand on him. And Erasmus Harvey also there. Going to be short of the first down by a yard. Call it third and one at the 28. I tell you, as well as, as we played offensively, it was unfortunate we fell behind two touchdowns, so we had to play part of it. Part of that was used to catch up. And, you know, we're only up two touchdowns here. This thing is... Uh, this thing could go to the wire here with Mississippi College threatening the score here. On the 29. Going to go left side. First down. They give it again to the fullback, J.D. Hampton. Ryan Branch makes the stop along with Erasmus Harvey. Harvey came in here as the leading tackler for the Blazers with 45. Mitchell at 38. Parsons 34. Johnson 31. And Hill 30 for Mike Major's ombre defense. Coming off the field for the flame red and black is Dennis Hampton. Hal Mummy calls them the Hampton Twins. Dennis Hampton and Andre Hampton. They're actually cousins. 35-21, Blazers up by 14. But Mississippi College threatening to stick one in here as the wind picks up a bit at Cleveland Field. On the 27-yard line, first down. Going to keep it himself. Brad Strom wants to run, and he's taken down at the 26-yard line. And they're on the stop for VSU. Reggie West, as well as Mike Gibson. So two Blazers bling him down, and he gets a yard on the play. Strom is not a runner, John. A busted play? No, I think that was just a, that was an option play, but uh, you know, I think you thought you know, he would definitely be pitching the ball, but that time uh, they had the pitch man, so he forced him to, to, to cut it up in there. And it looked like he was going to pick up some yardage, but it looked like uh, uh, for the Blazers, Mike Gibson came up and, and made the stop. 
Strom under the center again. Deep drop, looking to throw the football. Got time. Now he does it. He's hit from behind. Shea Williams knocked him down, and the ball is on the turf of Cleveland Field and picked up by one of the offensive linemen for Mississippi College who jumped on the ball, Bradley Creel, the senior from Franklinton, Louisiana. What a great hit by Shea Williams from behind, and he knocked Strom to the turf. Well, that's what we needed, a big play, and uh, that takes a takes a little bit of, uh, of the uh, rhythm out of their offense. Like I said, they were running that fullback, running that option, picking up five, six yards a clip, and all of a sudden we knock them back here. So this puts them in a situation that they don't like to be in. That's a third and, you know, close to 18 yards to go. Long way to go for the first down. Got to get down to the 17-yard line. Motion man to this side. It's Glover in the shotgun. Forward pitch on the shovel pass to the 35 to the 30, but not much more than that. It's Kevin Blackman is the man who carried the football. Edward Mitchell and Andre Randall knocked him down on the shovel pass. First time we've seen that in the football game from MC. And it will be not nearly enough for the first down. It'll be fourth and 13 to go at the 30-yard line. It's the Blazers' 30-yard line. We're in the fourth quarter. Blazers lead 35-21. Clock's malfunction. We don't know how much time's left. Now, here is just a, a situation where we'll give them 12 and a half yards, 12 and three quarters. We can't give them 13. We need to get that ball back and, and move it back down the field. Strom's going to have two men behind him. Same offensive set they've used most of the day. Fakes the run, looks to throw the ball. Rolls right, got some time, throws it too short at the 18. Under intense pressure in the backfield. Andre Randall was pressuring him all the way. Mike Gibson played a great quarterback on that particular situation as he really was all over Ben Sanford and the Blazers defense. It's a standing O for the crowd as they come off the field. Yeah, that was a good play. Good pressure defense that time. And... Uh, about the coverages that we needed covered, everybody uh, covered the, the, uh, the back out of the backfield and then uh, got enough pressure on Strom that he uh, couldn't make a good throw. So uh, nice play, nice job by the Blazer Hombre defense. Blazers with the lead and the football. Chris Hatcher's under the center, Dominic Ross in the backfield, Robert Williams wide to the right. And Calvin Walker wide to the left. Going to give it to Ross. Ross trying to turn the corner. He's going to be dragged down three yards behind the line of scrimmage, and they pull him over. Should be a flag as a man came Jeez. right in on him. After he was already in the oh, grass, a man my. came diving in there with the helmet. Should have been some kind of flag, but no call. I tell you what. Uh, ooh, what do they got to do? Two men had each of... Dominique's arms, and then another man came in with a helmet aiming for the chest. I don't yeah, think that, that. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the penalty is one thing, but, it, but in a situation like that, uh, you get a guy hurt uh, when somebody's holding him up, and then somebody else comes in for just to, to finish him off, and that play was almost out of bounds, so very surprised we didn't get a flag there. Loses six. It'll be second and 16 at the 26-yard line. Hatch wants to throw, throws to his short man. Dominic Ross, and he catches it to the 21 and got hit immediately by McBeath. Check that by number 14, and that's Richard Myers, the defensive end, the senior from Hattiesburg. As he caught the football, it'll be third and about 18 to go for the first down for the Blazers. Ball sitting right at the 23-yard line. 35-21 Blazers leading Mississippi College. A big Gulf South Conference game this afternoon. Well, the next time out, we'll try to get a score from you from that Central Arkansas, North Alabama thing. Hatch in the gun. Got Blake Duncan on his right side. Bean Pole's going to go in motion to the visitor's side of the field. Got Calvin Walker already over there. Hatch with a deep drop. Looking, looking, looking. Got Greer at the 27, to the 30, to the 35, to the 34, to the 39-yard line. Steve Greer with another great catch, and he's going to be just picking the first down for the Blazers of Hal Mummy. I think they're going to punt it away. Quickly, Mike, third quarter stats uh, of interest. Chris Hatcher, 38 of 47, 414 yards and five touchdowns. So uh, with that uh, series there, it's probably surpassed his record, I think, of 424 that he got last week to set a, uh, a school record. Steve Greer, nine catches, 138 yards. Here's the punt by Ashby, who is hurting a little bit. Very high hanger, going to be taken at the 15 to the... 20 to the 25, 30, 35, down the sideline, 40, 45, 50, 40, 35, push to the hands at the 32-yard line. Last man that could get him was Keith Braddock, and he pushed him out of bounds. 
I said it, I think this one will go to the wire, and unfortunately I may be right. Great punt return there by Ben Sanford, and uh, the Choctaws are right back in business all the way back to the Blazer, all the way down to the Blazer 32. Great field position. They had great field position in the first quarter, the opening of the second quarter, and here a couple of times in the fourth quarter. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. They only trailed by 14. We told you about Ben Sanford comes in second in the conference in punt returns. He hadn't hurt himself today. He's had a couple of nice ones. And we got Cedric Baker back in there at quarterback. Baker's got two men behind him. He's going to fake the run and look to throw. Over the middle, pumps once, pumps twice. Now he comes again, got his man there at the 15. What a throw, but it's incomplete. Made a beautiful throw at the 15-yard line. Walt Boy was there, and Tony Hill was there, but he's not able to come up with the football. He intended for Rod Wright, the freshman from Gulfport, Mississippi. Baker, all, all kind of times to throw the football there, but... Uh, Good coverage by the Blazer secondary and uh, uh, able to break that pass up. It'll be second down and 10 yards to go. Ball sitting right at the 32 yard line and the Blazers hoping to hang on here for the sixth win of the year for VSU. Third conference win. Three more conference games to go. Blazers rated 20th in the nation coming in. MC Kala, MC on probation. Motion man to the home side. Baker's gonna pitch it deep. Blackman, check that Glover's going to run it to 40, tries to get to the 35, drop the football, and Blazers jump in, and Ryan Branch. Ryan Branch recovers the football at the 38-yard line, and the Blazers are back in offensive business as the freshman from Tipton comes up with a big bubble recovery after Glover dropped it on the ground. Good play. Nice play by the Blazers there to, uh, to force the fumble. A good job. Looked like Mississippi College a little out of sync there. Looked like they wanted to set up a reverse. They had an option coming to the left side there. I think they were going to pitch it to uh, uh, to Blackman. And they looked like he was going to hand it back off to Ben Sanford coming around on the reverse. But uh, uh, they got out of rhythm. Blackman missed the handoff and had to just keep it there. And there's a swarm of Blazer defenders there to wrap him up and cause the fumble. And Flash Flanders on the right side. He got Calvin Walker on the left. Steve Greer's in the slot on the right side. Hatch is in the gun. Low snap, three-step drop, looking over the middle. Got a man, Greer, got to be interference. Got to be interference, it is late call, but they do call it. Greer caught the football anyway. Yeah. Greer catches it anyway at the 49-yard line and had a white shirt draped all over his shoulders while he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, certainly, I mean, it was clearly interference, but we didn't get a call there till late. I thought they were going to let it go, so it's a, it's a good thing that Steve Greer did catch it. It'll be a first down Blazers at the 49-yard line of Mississippi College. I say decline it because we just want to add to some passing statistics here. And that's what it's, they echo John Sentiments down on the field. 35-21 Blazers. Marks and Goldward again headed to the right end of your radio dial. The black shirts, the black hats, the black shoes. If we can get points here, whether it be touchdown field goal, I'd, I'd have to feel real good about it, but... Uh, I don't like it the way it is right now. Hatch in the gun. Get Dominic Ross on his right. In the slot is Steve Greer. Blazers back off the line. Our left tackle backed off the line. It'll be an illegal procedure call as York Kerensky, the senior, does something he doesn't normally do. Yeah, I hadn't seen that. In fact, I talked uh, last night with Coach Guy Morris about York Kerensky's having a great year. He says York's having a great year and uh, been a number of NFL scouts stopping in uh, to talk about him, watch him practice, so uh, he may get an opportunity to continue his career. We'd like nothing better. It'll be first down and 15 yards to go. Now the ball's back in Choctaw territory at the 46-yard line. Sean Bender's going to sneak out the slot on the left slide. Got Calvin Walker already over there. Robert Williams wide to the right side. Double slot formation. Greer's in the slot on the right. Give it to Dominic Ross. The fullback slams across that left tackle spot to the 49-yard line. Going to pick up four on the play. It'll be second and 11 right at the 49-yard line of the Choctaws. We're in the fourth quarter. We don't know how much time left. The clock malfunctioned. It's 35-21. Blazers up 14. Yeah, it has been. It's uh, been broken from the start. Uh... I guess it uh, worked last night uh, for the high school game, I assume, but uh, not so today. And it has been a little frustrating not to be able to, to, to know how much time is left. Hatcher is in the gun. He's got one man on the right side. That's Robert Williams. Calvin Walker on the left. Hatch looking left all the way. Oh, the, got his man Calvin Walker at the 43. Takes it to the 40-yard line right at the first down marker. It's going to be an 11-yard pass play, but will it be enough for the first down? 
Going to be right at the marker, and he's going to be short. He's going to be yeah. short just by about a yard. Yeah, wasn't a good. I didn't know. Well, looked like he had more forward progress than that. I thought he stretched out and got right to the marker, but they're going to mark it right on the Choctaw 40-yard line. Crowd didn't like it a bit, responding with a few boos. It'll be third and short. Third and one. Hatches under the center. And a tight end formation in there. Blake Duncan and Dominique Ross in the backfield. Hatch with a long snap count. Going to give it to Ross. Full back off the right side. Dives across the 40 to the 39-yard line. He's right on the marker now. He's going to be short. We've got a, Oh, what a spot. They say he's going to touch before he even got to the 40. Now where are they going to sit the football down? He's going to be just over the 40. Mike, the I mean, minutes. it's uh, you know, I don't like to sit here and, and, and second, uh, Tom, but he got more yardage than a half a foot there. There's I mean, no that is just, uh, I don't understand the spot there. Oh, man. They're going to spot it short of the first down. Although they may, they're going to bring in the change from the other side, but the way they have it spotted, it is going to be short of the first down. And they're going to bring it in and stretch them out. And looking, 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 and it is going to be short, yes, by by about two foot. 35-21 Blazers in a fourth down situation. Hal Mummy, I'm sure, will just go ahead and go for it here and try to move it another two foot and uh, get that first down and keep the ball going in the right direction. Blazers headed to the right end of your radio dial. The guys in the black pants and the, check that, the blue pants and the blue hats and the white shirts are trying to defend and keep them from doing just that. Haven't heard from Mississippi College offensively since the second quarter of this football game. We're in the fourth and final period, and the Blazers hoping to wrap up win number six on this 1993 season. Ranked 20th in the country coming in. Hatches in the gun. Going to fake it to Reginald Walker, naked bootleg left side. Wide open, first down, Robert Williams at the 30-yard line. Everybody expecting run, and on fourth down, he throws it to the bean ball. Out in the left flat, he's wide open for five yards, and the first down, and the VSU offense continues to move. Nice job by Chris Hatcher here. Takes the snap from the shotgun position, makes a great play-action fake to Reggie Walker coming around the right side, and then just rolls to his left, and... Uh, it's not easy for a right-handed quarterback running to his left to make a good throw, but that time he finds uh, Robert Williams, makes a nice crisp throw, gets the first down. Flash Flanders out wide to the right side. Calvin Walker on the left. Two men in the backfield with Hatcher. He's in the shotgun. Here's Greer. Heads in motion, comes back to the home side. Going to fake the run to Dominique. Now he's looking over the middle. Going to get Dominique at the 30-yard line. He cannot hang on to the one-hand stab. Stab part with that big right hand, but not able to hang on. That was a set play as they were trying to uh, decoy. Dominique gets a blocking back, and he just slips out of there and catches the short one. Not able to, however. 35-21, Blazers lead by 14, and that's been the score for a long, long time. Reginald Walker's going to check into the VSU lineup, and Sean Fender's going to come to the bench. As much scoring as we had in the first half, we've only had one touchdown scored in the second half. Hatches in the gun again. Got Reggie Walker on his left, Dominique Ross on his right. Slot on the left. Motion man is Flash Flanders to this side. Now he just sets up and he's going to head back upfield. Going to give it to Dominique. Off the left tackle, he's going to take it to the 25-yard line. Maybe got to the 24. In there on the stop for Mississippi College is Avis McNutt, the sophomore defensive end from Weir, Mississippi. Nice job by Chris Hatcher that time. Kept his eye on the 25-second clock, ran it all the way down to one second before he snapped the ball. Blazers want to use as much time as possible. Here in the fourth quarter, they're keeping the time down on the field. We have no idea up here in the press box exactly how much is left. Hatch is in the gun. You got Dominic Ross on the right side. He's standing on his own. Check that on the Mississippi College 30-yard line. Got three wideouts on the left side. Looking left all the way. Somebody's got to be open. Now he throws it back over the middle to Ross, and Ross cannot catch the ball at the 22. Wanted to bring it in and head it upfield, but he forgot to bring it in. It'll be an incomplete pass, and it'll bring up another fourth down situation and six yards to go. Yeah, I think Chris Hatcher stole a page from Joe Montana. You know, when Joe Montana's so good that he can look one way, throw the other, I think Chris Hatcher looking left side, and uh, I think out of the corner of his eye, saw Dominic Ross the whole time and just never actually looked at Dominic, but just kind of flipped it to him and, Surprised Dominic Ross didn't think the ball was coming and couldn't hang on. Fourth down and uh, call it six. 
or a long five here. The ball's at the 26-yard line. Hatch looking down there. Got a man. It's Greer at the 16. First down. Fires it into Steve Greer at the 16-yard line. First down, Blazers. Ross is going to come back out on the field. And also coming back out there is David Banks, who caught a touchdown pass early in the football game. And got an assist on another one, Mike. There we let one bounce off the shoulder pads and into the hands of Steve Greer. Sure did. Calvin Walker's going to come out of the game. And as John said, Hatcher's keeping a watch on that 25-second clock every time. Down to 14 now as he lines them up. Hatch in the black suit this afternoon. Coming off that stunning loss to West Georgia last week in which he threw two intercepts. This week he's right on target. Stays on the ground to Dominique. Comes back to the right side. Inside the 14 to the 13-yard line. Making the stop for Mississippi College is Patrick Lloyd, the junior linebacker from Morton, Mississippi. I tell you, you we really ought to take a minute and uh, you talk about this Choctaw team because they're, uh, with the probation, uh, uh, you know, they've got 17 walk-on players on the, on the that are dressed out today, only 55 dressed out total. They've played well. They really have, uh, have, have kept fighting, uh, done some good things on offense, and uh, you know, they're, they're fighting the tooth and nail here on defense, and this Blazer offense has just uh, been a little too much today. Hatches under the center. Ball's at the 13-yard line. Got Dominic Ross in the backfield. He'll give it to the fullback again. Gets to the 10 and knocked down right at the 10. In there on the stop is Avis McNutt again, the sophomore defensive end. It will bring up third down, and let's see, they're going to say four yards to go. Third and four at the 10. About the, the time remaining in the ball game. Two and a half minutes to play in the football game, and the Blazers up by 14. Hatch is in the gun, standing at the MC 15-yard line. Dominic Ross on his left. Three wideouts on the left side. Hatch taking a long time with a snap count. Ten seconds still on the 25-second play clock. Now he's going to move Reggie Walker over to the right side. Looking to Dominique Ross. Now he's got time to throw. Wide open. Flash at the three to the two. Oh, Flash. He lost his footing just a bit, John. He wanted to get in the end zone so bad, and he lost his footing right at the three. He could have slipped in there. The man who made the stop on Flash Flanders with Keith, Mo Keith Martin, the senior from McMinnville, Tennessee. Yeah, nice job by... Uh, we heard the Blazer coaches screaming next door. I think they saw Flanders open the whole time. But uh, Chris Hatcher didn't find him until a little bit late, but got it to him, got a first down, and that's a big play to, to keep the drive going. It certainly is, and Hatcher now has a chance to throw another touchdown pass, or will he stay on the ground, or will he take it himself? We've seen him take it himself on the naked bootleg a couple of times this year. Hatcher poised for glory at the goal line. First and goal at the three, goes left side to Ross over the top, touchdown! The fullback from Jacksonville takes it in, and the Blazers lead it 41 to 21 over Mississippi College. Great play there. You see a little bit of Dominic Ross's athletic ability. Looks like another guy I used to, to know about up in Athens Town. And it's going over it off to a couple of times. Going over the top there. Great job. Here's the kick by. Vernon Lorre to try to make it 42-21. Mark Beach is the holder. Snap is a good one. Kick is up, and it is good. Blazers 42, Mississippi College 21. We'll take a 60-second network break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. and John Lastinger back on a gray Saturday afternoon except for the scoreboard and it's all lit up with laser points 42 of them 
to 21 for the visitors from Cleveland, Mississippi. Check that from Clinton, Mississippi. We'll right. go to Cleveland next That's week. That's right. You're getting a little ahead of yourself there. Chris Hatcher with that last completion, 480 yards passing today. To set another single-game record for VSU football. Dillard with a kickoff, line drive. Picked up at the 20-yard line to the 25, to the 27, to the 28-yard line, and a flag down on the play. Flag down on the play. Turn was by MC's Bobby Williams. Well, let's see. If I, to, if I was a betting man, I'd probably say this would go into the Blazers, but uh, <laughs> well, let's see. Now we're going to get a holding call on Mississippi College, and uh, that'll push him back. Nice. Good to see Shadrick Green back on the field, Mike. Uh, limped off, thought he was... Uh, Thought he might be seriously injured there, but uh, went down on the kickoff. He's limping a little bit, but uh, good to know he's not hurt too seriously. Absolutely. So that is a holding call against MC. Spot the ball back at the 19 and a half yard line. So that's worse field position easily. They've had all afternoon. They had glorious field position for most of this homecoming football game. Well, let's see what they elect to do. They don't like to, to be put in a situation where they've got to throw it from first down on, but uh, if they got any chance of, of making this thing interesting, they're going to have to throw it. Here's Brad Strom back in at quarterback. Three-step drop. Throws the screen on the left side to Glover. Glover to 18, tries to get to the 20, and he will not get there as the black shirts just swarm all over him, led by Erasmus Harvey and Edward Mitchell. Andre Randall also there. The play is going to pick up uh, maybe a foot. Maybe not. It's second and 10 right at the 20. Good job by the Blazer defenders. Uh, linebackers and secondary want to keep everything in front of them. Don't want anything going over their heads. And the clock will run. And that's what the Blazers wanted to do. Leading big time here, 42-21. Blazers come into the football game, averaging 44.4 points per contest, third in the nation. Brad Strom is going to give it up to his running back out of the backfield to the 24-yard line. And that is Kevin Blackman. And in there to make the stop for VSU is Reggie West. Blackman carries it to the 24, and he'll be six yards short of the first down. Third and six at the 24. And it will be... That's the end of the football game. Just like that, it is. <laughs> Just like that, it's all over at Cleveland Field. Blazers win it 42-21 over Mississippi College.